Well-being is realized by small steps but is truly no small thing. Happiness is a good flow of life, better to trip with the feet than with the tongue. We have two ears and one mouth, so we should listen more than we say. A bad feeling is a commotion of the mind repugnant to reason and against nature. If you lay violent hands on me, you'll have my body, but my mind will remain with Stilpo. The goal of life is living in agreement with nature. If it is not right, do not do it. If it is not true, do not say it. Think of the life you have lived until now as over and as a dead man. See what's left as a bonus and live it according to nature. Love the hand that fate deals you and play it as your own for what could be more fitting. You could leave life right now. Let that determine what you do and say and think. In your actions, don't procrastinate. In your conversations, don't confuse. In your thoughts, don't wander. In your soul, don't be passive or aggressive. In your life, don't be all about business. It's time you realize that you have something in you more powerful and miraculous than the things that affect you and make you dance like a puppet. The best revenge is not to be like your enemy. Waste no more time arguing what a good man should be. Be one if anyone can refute me, show me, in making a mistake or looking at things from the wrong perspective. I'll gladly change. It's the truth. I'm after, and the truth never harmed anyone. Choose not to be harmed and you won't feel harmed. Don't feel harmed and you haven't been. Be tolerant with others and strict with yourself. It never ceases to amaze me. We all love ourselves more than other people but care more about their opinion than our own. Let us prepare our minds as if we'd come to the very end of life. Let us postpone nothing. Let us balance life's books each day. The one who puts the finishing touches on their life each day is never short of time. First say to yourself what you would be and then do what you have to do. How long are you going to wait before you demand the best for yourself? Curb your desire, don't set your heart on so many things and you will get what you need. The chief task in life is simply this, to identify and separate matters so that I can say clearly to myself which are externals not under my control and which have to do with the choices I actually control. Where then do I look for good and evil? Not to uncontrollable externals, but within myself to the choices that are my own. Don't seek for everything to happen as you wish it would, but rather wish that everything happens as it actually will. Then your life will flow well. Don't explain your philosophy. Embody it. If anyone tells you that a certain person speaks ill of you, do not make excuses about what is said of you. But answer, he was ignorant of my other faults, else he would have not mentioned these alone. That's why the philosophers warn us not to be satisfied with mere learning, but to add practice and then training. For as time passes, we forget what we learned and end up doing the opposite, and hold opinions the opposite of what we should. The key is to keep company only with people who uplift you, whose presence calls forth your best. If you want to improve, be content to be thought foolish and stupid. Nothing to my way of thinking is a better proof of a well-ordered mind than a man's ability to stop just where he is and pass some time in his own company. We are more often frightened than hurt, and we suffer more in imagination than in reality. How does it help to make troubles heavier by bemoaning them? No person has the power to have everything they want, but it is in their power not to want what they don't have and to cheerfully put to good use what they do have. He who fears death will never do anything worthy of a man who is alive. I judge you unfortunate because you have never lived through misfortune. You have passed through life without an opponent. No one can ever know what you are capable of, not even you. If a man knows not which port he sails, no wind is favorable. Life is very short and anxious for those who forget the past, neglect the present, and fear the future. People are frugal in guarding their personal property, but as soon as it comes to squandering time, they are most wasteful of the one thing in which it is right to be stingy. The good life for man is the life spent in seeking for the good life for man, and the virtues necessary for the seeking are those which will enable us to understand what more and what else. The good life for man is, it is only by participation in a rational practice-based community that one becomes rational. Man is essentially a storytelling animal, but a teller of stories that aspire to truth. The exercise of the virtues is itself a crucial component of the good life for man. I can only answer the question, what am I to do?
if I can answer the prior question, of what story or stories do I find myself a part? Knowledge is no guarantee of good behavior, but ignorance is a virtual guarantee of bad behavior. To be a good human being is to have a kind of openness to the world, an ability to trust uncertain things beyond your own control. As human beings, we ought to be vulnerable. We shouldn't try to say that we can be self-sufficient or do everything that's necessary for a good life on our own, because we need other people. Life is about more than earning a living. And if you're not in the habit of thinking about it, you can end up middle-aged or even older and shocked to realize that your life seems empty. You can't really change the heart without telling a story. The greatest obstacle to living is expectancy which hangs upon tomorrow and loses today. You are arranging what lies in fortune's control and abandoning what lies in yours. What are you looking at? To what goal are you straining? The whole future lies in uncertainty. Live immediately from on the shortness of life. For those who follow nature, everything is easy and straightforward. Whereas for those who fight against her life, is just like rowing against the stream from letters from a stoic floods will rob us of one thing, fire of another. These are conditions of our existence which we cannot change. What we can do is adopt a noble spirit, such a spirit that befits a good person, so that we may bear up bravely under all that fortune sends us and bring our wills into tune with natures from letters from a stoic. No person has the power to have everything they want, but it is in their power not to want what they don't have and to cheerfully put to good use what they do have from moral letters. Let us meet with bravery, whatever may befall us. Let us never feel a shudder at the thought of being wounded or of being made a prisoner or of poverty or persecution. From letters from a Stoic. Six, begin at once to live and count each separate day as a separate life. From letters from a Stoic. We should always be asking ourselves, is this something that is or is not in my control? But for me, every omen is favorable for I want it to be so, for whatever may come about. It is within my power to derive benefit from it. Curb your desire. Don't set your heart on so many things, and you will get what you need. Don't seek for everything to happen as you wish it would, but rather wish that everything happens as it actually will. Then your life will flow well. It's something like going on an ocean voyage. What can I do? Pick the captain, the boat, the date, and the best time to sail. But then a storm hits, what are my options? I do the only thing I am in a position to do, drown, but fearlessly without bawling or crying out to God because I know that what is born must also die. When someone is properly grounded in life, they shouldn't have to look outside themselves for approval. Just keep in mind, the more we value things outside our control, the less control we have. The chief task in life is simply this, to identify and separate matters so that I can say clearly to myself which are externals not under my control and which have to do with the choices I actually control. Where then do I look for good and evil? Not to uncontrollable externals, but within myself to the choices that are my own. The happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts from meditations. If you are pained by any external thing, it is not this thing that disturbs you but your own judgment about it, and it is in your power to wipe out this judgment now. From meditations, you could leave life right now. Let that determine what you do and say and think. Today I escaped anxiety. Or no, I discarded it because it was within me, in my own perceptions, not outside. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. It's time you realize that you have something in you more powerful and miraculous than the things that affect you and make you dance like a puppet. From meditations, the tranquility that comes when you stop caring what they say, or think or do only what you do, not to be distracted by their darkness, to run straight for the finish line, unswerving from meditations. Whatever happens to you has been waiting to happen since the beginning of time. The twining strands of fate wove both of them together. Choose not to be harmed and you won't feel harmed. Don't feel harmed and you haven't been from meditations. Waste no more time arguing what a good man should be. Be one. If anyone tells you that a certain person speaks ill of you, do not make excuses about what is said of you, but answer. He was ignorant of my other faults. 
else he would not have mentioned these alone.